Hi, how are you? Welcome to Hoi Noi TV. I'm your boy Hoi Noi. This is gonna be a short video. Uh, just earlier in the week, I was invited by a good friend of mine to hang out at his cottage in the woods on a lake. Of course, we spent our time out there doing water sports and fishing, all that normie stuff, but I also indulged in my hobby of trying to catch reptiles and amphibians. It's called herping. I know it's the worst name ever, but it is a thing that people do. It does exist. I've been doing it since I was four. Now, for the most part, I got skunked. I did not find a single snake the whole time I was up there. No salamanders, no amphibians of any kind. But I did manage to catch two native Chelonians, which is a fancy word for turtles. That's right, I found an adult female map turtle and a big old common snapping turtle. A snapping turtle is something I have been trying to catch forever. I have never even seen one, although I know they have common in the name. I, it, maybe it's an Ontario thing, we just don't have that many. Maybe I've been doing something wrong, but this time I got it. Anyway, let's get into the clips. Oh, he won't hear me. I've got, I've got a video on. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> oh. oh. This is a big boy. Is he a snapper? No. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, we'll check the, the info sheet later, but I think. <laughs> Just give us a couple more minutes of your time. All right, this is a map turtle. This is a native big boy. Similar at first glance to the invasive red-eared or yellow-bellied slider. Uh, it's a female, you can tell by the length of the front claws. Males have much longer claws, which are used for uh, part of a mating display and digging. It's definitely an adult, maybe an older girl, really healthy. No leeches, beautiful shell. I'm still out of breath. Uh, it, she was just floating. Christy spotted her, I swam over. I got really close and uh, it noticed me and dove down. But luckily the water is crystal clear so I was able to see where it, it was hiding and just pick it up. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm... Okay, check it out. I've got a common snapping turtle. This is a lifer for me. This is the first one of these I've ever seen or captured in the wild. I was just snorkeling around the shoreline here and she swam right up to me, almost like she's gonna attack me. I had to like block her with my little stick that I was holding, uh, but I've got her now. And she's about 25 pounds. I'm getting pretty exhausted here. She's not giving up the fight, but uh, check it out. I'm calling her the girl, but I'm not 100% uh, on sexing these guys, but you know it's a snapper because they got that big dinosaur tail. You can see that. Really cool animals. Maybe the coolest reptile out on this lake, if you ask me. And she's mean. Or at least she's angry. So, really happy with this find. It's a big one. They get bigger, but not by much. And I'm going to let her go, because that's what she wants to do. Really happy to find this. So cool. A couple leeches on her back. Lots of algae growing. I'll let her go here, Chrissy, and maybe you can watch her swim. Mm -hmm. I just lifted my toes up. Oh, there she goes. Oh my God, that was so heavy. Well, there you have it, gang. How freaking cool is that? What an awesome animal. I'm so glad to have had the chance to interact with it. That's it for the clips. I know it wasn't much, but there are a couple more things I want to say. Uh, I know I appropriated the, the verb noodling in the title of this video. Noodling is uh, something they do in the American South where they go uh, with snorkels and masks and they put their fists into underwater swamp holes and try to catch uh, catfish by, barehanded. Uh, and I did that with turtles. I think it counts. I think it's fair use and I am appropriating the term. And if somebody can come up with a better term for free diving for turtles, than noodling, uh, I'm all ears, but I like it. I like the ring it has to it. I, I now consider myself a noodler. 
of sorts. How I came across the map turtle was discussed in the clip. How I came across the snapping turtle was not, and I think it's actually really cool. Uh, the water was crystal clear, but it was a very swampy area, you know, really thick with reeds and weeds and lily pads. I was in about four feet of water, just snorkeling around, looking at little schools of, of fish, minnows, stuff like that. And all of a sudden, this huge prehistoric creature starts coming towards me like this with its mouth open from about I saw it from it was about five feet away from me and I mean you saw the turtle it's huge but also I think my mask magnified it and also being underwater magnified it so it it looked like a goddamn triceratops was coming at me I'm telling you I was uh, actually quite spooked now I know they lay their eggs on land so I don't think it was defending a nest or anything like that but it did really seem to be in a defensive posturing and it was coming for me. And its eyes were wide open, its mouth was wide open and it was pawing towards me like this and I said whoa! And I actually was holding a little piece of driftwood that I had collected because I, I use driftwood in my terrariums and I had to put the driftwood out and block it from attacking me. <laughs> I mean, I think it was gonna bite me. Maybe it was just had its mouth open because it felt like it. But I put the driftwood out and it went for the driftwood uh, instead of my person, which is good. From there, I was able to kind of swim around to the back of it and I kind of put my hand on the back of the carapace, the shell, and pushed it to the bottom. And from there, I was able to switch hands, get my other hand underneath, lift it up. And I know from other YouTubers and research that I've done that you gotta, you can only hold them by the back half of the shell. They have more reach in terms of like reaching back with their jaws than an alligator snapper. So you really wanna only hold them from the back of the shell. I was so taken aback and impressed by how strong it was. It was pushing at me with those back legs, pushing at my chest, trying to get free from me, pushing at my wrist, trying to loosen my grip. But I managed to hold on and keep the position correct so that it couldn't reach back and get me. I do want to take a moment to say that this is probably the first time on the channel that I have shown you or I have handled an animal that is potentially dangerous. These guys can absolutely take off a finger, do serious tissue and tendon damage. I do not recommend that anybody else tries to do what I did in this video. Apparently you commonly see snapping turtles on the road basking and they're at danger of becoming roadkill so a lot of people like to move them. Highly recommend if there's a house nearby, knock on the door, ask for a snow shovel, and scoop that bad boy up. Don't handle them if you can avoid it. If you do, they have that long ass dinosaur tail, don't grab them by the tail because you can cause spinal damage, you can, you can dislocate the tail, you can even deglove the tail. I felt this thing's skin, it looks like a dinosaur, it looks like a crocodilian, but it's really kind of very loose papery skin like you might find on a, an elderly person in a nursing home. I was really kind of taken aback by how much give the skin had and how it felt like, you know, you could really hurt this thing if you weren't careful. It doesn't have armor plating on every inch of its body. It's just got that humongous shell. And then beyond that, those other soft bits are pretty vulnerable. So you really gotta be careful. You gotta respect the animal for your own safety but also for its safety. So with that out of the way, the last two things I wanna say about the snapping turtle experience was it was so heavy, I was taken aback. It was like lead, like you look at the size of it, and you say, oh, that looks like a 10, 15 pound snapper, but it was just way heavier than it looked. It was as if it was waterlogged. I don't know how that could be a thing, but just an extremely heavy animal. I was super out of breath just trying to, you know, partly because it was fighting me, but partly because of the sheer weight. So that was interesting. The other thing is everybody that's seen the clip on my Instagram and stuff is saying, oh, that must have stunk so bad. How stinky was that? And it's true that snapping turtles absolutely do musk as a defense. You know, they release a stinky doo-doo fluid uh, to kind of deter predators. That didn't happen for me. I don't just no smell. I wasn't thinking about it. And my only explanation is that I am just such a good turtle noodler. You know, I finessed it. I caused it. Obviously some stress, but not enough that it went to the musking stage. I guess another possibility would be that it had already musked due to another previous threat and didn't have any musk juice left to squeeze out onto me. But in any case, that's a good thing. I still would have enjoyed the experience and been just as hyped on it if it did, but the fact that it didn't is the icing on the cake. Anyway, that was absolutely the highlight of my weekend up at the lake there. But I did a ton of snorkeling in this shallow clear water bay 
and I saw ton. I just, you know, I hung out. I moved really slowly, just giving my feet little kicks, and I was able to infiltrate schools of sunfish, and I was able to get right up to some gigantic lunker trophy big mouth bass and swim along with them. I followed one around for 20 minutes from about three feet behind it. And it was just so cool to experience this whole little ecosphere in the lagoon in front of my buddy's cottage. And I won't soon forget it and I can't wait to go back. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Hoi Noi TV. If you liked it, shoot me a thumbs up, comment something. And if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. As the world opens up, I can't wait to start traveling again and doing this kind of stuff in different countries where there are different species. My girlfriend's father actually lives in Ghana in West Africa and we've gone to visit him previously. So in the future of the channel, hopefully I'll be back there and I might even be able to get you some footage of ball pythons in the wild. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Be good.